Hi, this is Matt Miller from Ditch That Textbook. And in this video, we're gonna be talking all about assignments in Microsoft Teams. Assignments really are the engine that drives your work in Microsoft Teams. And there's a wide variety of different kinds of assignments that you can create. And there are all sorts of places where you can leave students feedback. It can be a really powerful way to check in with students all throughout that process and then be able to grade their work and give it back to them. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at the assignment process and how we can make better assignments. So once we're in Microsoft Teams, you'll find that there are a couple of places where we can find our assignments. For one, if you, were, if you have your class open, you can go to the general tab and there should be, or sorry, the general channel and there should be a tab up at the top that says assignments. Of course, along the left hand sidebar, you're likely to find a button that says assignments as well. And if you click on it, you can choose which class you want to create an assignment for or to uh, monitor existing assignments. So you can see from here, we have a few assignments that are already out there, but we're going to create a new one. In this case, it's just going to be a regular assignment. And then from here, you'll see that there are all sorts of fields that you can fill in. For one, you can add a title to your assignment so that students know what it is, and you can even categorize them to make them a little easier to find. Of course, there's instructions where we tell students what we need to do. Resources. This is an important one because this is where we can add attachments to our assignments. And so if we add an attachment, we're able to do a couple of things with it as well. For instance, we can make a view only attachment that students can't edit, or we can even make it so that they get their own copy of the attachment, which they can edit. That's kind of like taking the attachment to the digital photocopier, so to speak, so that students get their own copies. After that, you can specify the number of points that it's worth, and you can even add a rubric. Now, you're able to choose from pre-created rubrics if you want to, or you can make a brand new rubric where you can put your grading criteria, you enter the description of what you want them to add, and then what the descriptors are of each of the types of criteria for the different levels. And then once you're done and you've got a title and a description in there, you can click attach and add that to your assignment. Another nice part of Microsoft Teams is that you don't have to make an assignment for everyone. So you can click the little drop down here where it says add to or assign to all a students and just pick specific students that you want to add it to. This is a great way to bring a level of differentiation into the assignment where you could create a couple of different versions of it and just assign it to the students that need to get it. You can, of course, change your due date and your due time and how you want to handle late turn-ins. And then down here, you can also say where you want the notifications to go. Do you want them to go to the general channel or do you want them to go to another channel within your uh, team? And then whenever you got that all set, then you click assign. Now, there are lots of places where you can add feedback to your students' work. So I'm going to take a look at another assignment. And within this one, I'll see that I have a few students who have already turned things in and I've already graded them. And then we've got a couple of students who have taken a look at it uh, but haven't turned it in yet. So within all of that, we can check on in on the students no matter where they are in the process. So even if a student hasn't turned something in, I can click and open up their file, especially if you've done this with make a copy for each student. I can open up the file and I can check on, in on them. And then you can even see in the right hand um, sidebar, there's a place here for general feedback. This is a place where I can check in on this student, I can say, hey, looks like you haven't started on this, it's due soon, is there anything I can do to help you out? Now, if I do want to grade something that students have turned in or provide some feedback, there are a couple of places where, they can, where I can do that. For one, I can, of course, use the general feedback I just talked about over here. But then, in addition to that, I can also add individual comments to any particular part of the of the student's work, whether it's a Word document or a PowerPoint presentation or whatever. And so I can do that. If you have the comments sidebar open over here, you can click new, or you can also find comments under the insert menu by clicking this little speech bubble right here. And then once I've typed in a comment, I can insert it. 
And then you'll also see these little icons over here. This is where these different little speech bubble icons are how you specify where that feedback applies. So what's nice about the way you can do feedback here is you can do it very specifically down to the word or the sentence or the item, or you can do uh, feedback that's more general. Now within individual assignments, there are a handful of things that we can do that can turn ordinary Microsoft Teams assignments into better Microsoft Teams assignments. And the first one has to do with the title. The title of the assignment is really important because that's the one thing that students see before they even click into the assignment. It's prime real estate. So anything you can put in the title to make it easier on the students is time well spent. I know a lot of teachers will number their assignments so that if you give students an assignment number of an assignment that they need to do, that's a lot easier and clearer for them. I also see teachers using emojis in their assignments, not necessarily just to decorate, but also to organize, almost making them kind of like little labels that they can put on things so that at a glance, students can see what's there. When it comes to instructions, there are a couple of things that we can do. Of course, I mentioned emojis in the first one. Uh, that also stands within the, the instructions. But it's also good to break up your text to make it a little bit easier for students to see. And you can see how in this set of instructions, I have a blank line in between different lines of text just to break it up to make it easier to read. Another important part of the process is to give students an opportunity to revise their work based on your feedback. You don't just want to give them feedback whenever an assignment is done and then it's done. If possible, if you can return that back to the student, let them revise or review the feedback, just read over it, and then revise their work and resubmit it to you, then they actually get to take action on it. And then that feedback actually becomes an important part of the process. So that kind of gives you a summary of the process of creating an assignment and also making your assignments better. So hopefully with this, your students will be able to do better assignments, they'll be able to get more feedback, and it'll make the learning process better for everyone.